we have to give a shout out to my guy a shout out to my guy and somebody who i think should get some credit and some flipping you know uh what you call it some credit and some praise uh, because he is an extended member of the homeless cat crew bigger fucking chase hooper I don't think this was covered anywhere um, because I just recently finished watching the UFC fight night from the other weekend. But big up fucking Chase Hooper. He ended up winning, I think, in the second round um, due to submission. A bit of a dicey submission because the guy basically acted like he didn't tap, but he did tap. Um, but big up Chase, bro. He looked really fucking good. Chase is improving, bro. The striking is really good. There was a sequence that he got the guy to the ground in the second round. He came in with like a couple, like a really good one-two down the fucking pipe, right down the middle. And then he did some spinning fucking fist thing that didn't land. But then with the spinning fist, he then went down and got the single leg. And then that's what kind of led to the kind of, you know, um, submission. Bro, Chase Hooper's looking good, man. Chase Hooper's looking fucking good. He's really fucking improved, um, especially his striking. His striking is really kind of leveled up. So I'm really happy for the guy. Um, it was a really um, good victory. I feel like, you know, he kind of ragged all the guy, to be honest, which was nice to see. His striking looked very crisp, obviously. And obviously, when he gets on the ground, his jiu-jitsu is high level enough for him to obviously get the win. But I really enjoyed the fight. I really enjoyed it. Good to see him improving. Good to see him getting better and, you know, sharpening his skills and shit. So big up my guy, Chase Hooper, for that fucking win. That was very, very, very impressive, honestly. I think, was it a DAS? I think it was a DAS. He went for a triangle a couple of times. Um, and then I think he ended up winning. He ended up um, winning that fight with a DAS, which is one of the... It's, it's a sexy submission to be fair because you basically look like a snake you're kind of twisting and turning and twisting and turning and squeezing that fucking submission a bit harder so yeah and the guy obviously look he was covered in lumps he was already and bloodied Chase's face is still untouched and shit so clearly um, he inflicted a lot of damage on the guy caught him on the inside and it was a really fun fight the fight card itself was really fun as well I'm not going to lie um, the prelims were pretty good that fight night that just passed, the one with um, Lewis and Nascimento, the prelims were pretty entertaining. Um, the Charles Johnson v. Jade Hadley, I forgot how that one finished, actually. I can't jog my memory. Oh, this one, he looked really good. Trey Matthews and, and Billy Goff, this was a really fun fight. I really enjoyed the, um, those two fighting. Unfortunately, both of these guys has zero cardio. The cardio was just non-existent. So the fight basically you know it kind of turned into a slugfest after the first round basically but the one i felt the worst for is terence mckinney terence mckinney either wins in spectacular fashion or loses in particular fashion and he lost so brutal first round head kick to this guy called esteban ribovic 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 and god almighty bro he caught him with like um what's his name with like a cowboy with a donald Cerrone um combo or uh, I forgot his other name as well, where you go with the, you kind of end the combo with a with a head kick and he didn't see it coming. There was a bit where he got head kicked, right? And his face landed, like he he, he, he landed seating down, like he landed sitting down on the side of the cage. It was a fucking horrible fucking loss. And for a moment, I thought he broke his jaw because he was like, he, he landed and he his jaw was like that. So I thought he kind of broke his jaw and he couldn't move it, but I guess that was just him, like, you know, um, having some sort of concussion, I'm not too sure, but it was a fucking brutal loss, so um, keep your head up, Terence McKinney, hopefully he comes back off that, but, you know, I guess it's just the way he fights, and he likes to go for the jugular, so it kind of is what it is. Um, pick up Chase Hooper again, he obviously um, beat this guy called Boroshev, so that was pretty good as well, love to see that one in the second round. Um, this fight was really interesting. Waldo Cortez Acosta versus Robles Dasping Daspengi, whatever, right? The Spangi guy didn't didn't show Waldo any respect. No respect. He came in there on some bully boy thing. He came in there with his hands low, trying to go for like a you know an Instagram knockout. It didn't work. And then the Waldo dude ended up just like, okay, we're gonna fight. We're gonna do MMA now. I'm not going to let you just like tee off on me and turn this into a fucking glory fight. We're going to do MMA. And he just kept taking him down. He just kept taking him down. He just kept taking him down. And and eventually just kept beating him on the ground and won. And it was a really good reminder of like, yeah, UFC is UFC, but it's still mixed martial arts. You can't just go in there on some fucking striking thing and think the other opponent is going to let you just tee off on them. It's not going to happen. So big up Waldo, Cortez, Acosta on that win. I enjoyed it. Sean Watson versus Alex Caceres was a really fun fight. I'm not going to lie. 
Sean Watson's feints are so good, he got me. I was watching the fight, and legitimately, I think it was in the first round, he did a couple of feints where I moved. <laughs> I was watching it on my laptop and he made me flinch. So I, could, I can't imagine how good he was, how hard he was to read in the fucking octagon. He was really teeing off on Alex Caceres. Like he was catching him with loads of sneaky hooks and punches, like coming out from all, all odd angles. Um, the, the calf kicks were horrendous as well. He was literally making them spin at every time. He was almost aiming at his Achilles or something. It was quite sick to watch. I'm not going to lie. But honestly, I swear to God, Sean Watson's feints are so good. He made me, he made me kind of cover my face as I was watching the thing on the laptop. I felt so embarrassed. Um, we continue. Um, Diego Ferreira versus Matias Rebek. This is another sad fight as well. I think Matias Rebek was Rebecca. Sorry, I think he was winning. I'm not gonna lie. I think he was actually winning. And then towards the end of the f of of the third round, literally ten seconds to go, um, he then ends up kind of losing via ground and pound. And you know. To be fair, it was another one of those sad things where, like, you know, he came on some bully boy thing, didn't finish the fight, and of course it went where it went. Um, this was the weirdest one. I still can't work out how he knocked him out, but this Carlos Olberg dude, <sighs> Alonso Mainfield came and tried to rush him from the first belt, which is a bad decision, and he was able to somehow spin from the rush, um, Carlos Olberg, and then I think he caught Alonso Mainfield in the back of the head or maybe around the ear. I think so. And that's what sent him all over the place equilibrium wise. And then of course he just finished him with punches. But it was so quick. It happened in a blink of an eye. I didn't even catch it. How fast it happened. He was able to pivot and find space and then boom, 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 boom. So it, it, honestly, it was a really good movement. To get, I think the only the only thing that's concerning about Carl Oberg, his punches kind of come from low, kind of come from his waist. He's not the most, he, he, he doesn't look the most cleanest when he's striking. It's not very, um, polished you know it's kind of raw but he's really good he's really fucking good um another one here is Joaquin Buckley versus uh Robert, yeah uh what's his name uh Roz Ruzibov Ruzebov Ruzebov um really good fight again Joaquin Buckley definitely proved the doubt was wrong he kind of got fed to the walls a little bit with this matchup I'm not gonna lie but he did he did prove that he was you know levels above the dude took him down at will and kind of, you know, dictated the entire fight. So happy about walking back into that one. And in the final fight, who the fuck is Rodrigo Nascimento? Did they just feed this guy to Derek Lewis for him to get a win? I felt like this fight was the UFC's way of thanking Derek Lewis for always providing them with good and fun, entertaining fights where he goes out for the kill. You know, he's not, he's not really about grappling or anything. He just wants to knock somebody out for the fucking highlight reel. So I think they gave him this Rodrigo Nascimento guy as a sacrificial lamb. Here, here you go. Thank you for, you know, giving us loads of great clips from your interviews to your post match, to your post fight celebrations to your knockouts. Here's a fight because that Rodrigo Nascimento guy was pretty garbage. I'm not gonna lie, like <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was like, why the fuck is this guy fighting Derek Lewis? But yeah, <laughs> decent card overall. But most importantly, like I said, big up Chase Hooper, man. Big up Blood Clark Chase Hooper. Well deserved, very very impressive victory, very 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 impressive style away. He put away his man, and I can't wait to see him fight again. So big up my guy Chase, big up my guy Chase. <laughs>